S's as we welcome in the Sarah Hodges. Are are you are you are you live from CBS or are you live? Oh yeah. So what happened was like I planned to do this at home, but then I realized my laptop was at work. So I was like blow drying my hair, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my laptop is not here. So you're getting the very raw version <laughs> of S money inside my sports office. Um, S money. So is a true story. The first show Sarah and ever and I ever did together. The final commercial break before the show starts is playing. And I know where she's at. She's next door at Game Fit. This is when I was working for the bad guys. Uh-huh. And Sarah was just going to come in and do like the first hour with me. And mm-hmm. like, yo, where are, are you? Are you good? Are you? Wh- where are you? She was like, oh, I'm in the car putting on makeup. <laughs> nah, this is this is this is pre streaming. Like, Sarah, I need you up here was right so now. Mad. I was like, well, you know, because I'm so used to being like five four and i'm like running in like all good like i'm sitting in my seat but like you know i shouldn't have stressed you out like that that was really rude oh, but well the part that it was just killer because i was like i know she's next door like <laughs> i know exactly where she's at like what's taking her so was she getting some extra quad stretches in like where's she at i decided not to do it to you this time <laughs> i saved the makeup for later i still have like three hours before my show so i was like you know what i'm just gonna come Come on, let everybody see the real me. And you know, I'm trying to take care of my skin, so I'm not ashamed. Look, man, we're we're just happy to have you here and 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 be able to catch up with you when you're not in like Acapulco or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Right. You know, we're just, we're just happy to give you know, a little bit of your time. That's it. Oh man, come on. Anything for y'all. Anything for y'all. And you guys are so gracious to me. So no, we, we've learned where Sarah's two ugliest friends. We've learned that through her Instagram page. This is like, true. This not out, yeah, close. Not that, in, close. that Instagram page is not and for that, the weak boy. I'm I, sexy, so that's saying something. <laughs> Go ahead and give me the followers. I'm cool with it. If y'all want to see uh, all my all my fine friends, just follow me on Instagram. <laughs> do it, do it. Um, you are. We talked on Sunday hmm. immediately after the Raider game, and you are you are Raider Nation through and through. And I I could sense in our you know, discussions on television, your emotions were a little, a little high there. You were a little short with the Raiders. I'm high on the Raiders this year. I like them a lot. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not uh, taken back by what happened uh, this weekend at all. Well, I'm glad Uh, and lucky you. I'm glad you get to feel so comfortable and confident in my team. You know what it is? It's like, you want to come out like with a hot start, you know, especially with all of the offensive weapons that either that we got or that we secured, you know, going into the season. Um, you know, I do find solace in the fact that our defense stepped up in the second half. I find solace in the fact that I realize that this is the first time, you know, live that DC was out there with Devonte, and, you know, and you've said it on the show, like you would have loved to see him sort of use all the targets a little bit more, a little bit better. And he addressed that. And he's like, look, we're just, we're, we're, we're getting things in motion here. I haven't forgotten about those guys. It was just in those situations. I didn't quite see them and we're going to get it together. So I did, the three picks is just what killed me. And then the five sacks on top of that. And like, we already have problems with our offensive line. We let Leatherwood go and, I thought I was hoping that he would come back and be much stronger this season. And yeah. that offensive line just like, isn't looking great. And and that scares me. Well, the, the killer about it is Sarah is the AFC and particularly the AFC West is so tough. Like Sunday's game, which I think the Raiders will take care of business. I don't, I don't think they'll have any problem with the Cardinals, but that's a must win. You can't go. zero and two in AFC and in the AFC West. Like you have to win that game. And that that's the thing about it. We talked about this the other day. I have a little more belief in Derek Carr than others. I think Derek Carr is good. I think now with all the weapons around him, he'll be fine. But make, make no doubt about it. He's got to show and prove this year. He has to step up and have that year that a lot of people have been waiting for since he got hurt, really. I mean, y'all agree this is it, right? Like, this is yeah. the year for DC. Mm-hmm. Like, if he doesn't perform, I, I don't know how we can – I mean, yeah, we could blame it a little bit on the offensive line, but, like, y- your quarterback has to be better than what we saw in week one. 
but but just, I think that's a you're right. But I, I think it's how do you finish that sentence though? Like if Derek Carr doesn't perform, okay, then what? Mm. W- what do you do? You get just he's D. oh. <laughs> Ready for the Jimmy G era in Las Vegas? No, I'm not. I mean, I don't think Jimmy G is nearly as close to a talent as Derek Carr. I just, I I don't know. Yeah. I I don't know. That's the tough part. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's like, you know, I know that you guys love DC and you have so much faith in DC and I want to. It's not like I don't. It's not like I want to be sitting here in my sports office cursing out my quarterback every Sunday before I run at the desk and try to be like, you know, I've I seen don't want it. to do that. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it sucks. <laughs> but like, you know what bothers me about DC and, and you see times where he is a gamer, but what bothers me about him and what kind of Jimmy G does have is in those final seconds, in those final moments he steps up. Mm. And I know that we've seen it a little bit out of Derek Carr, but I feel like like that's almost his biggest problem is he's not 100% a gamer. Wow. Sarah, who's the real DC? Daniel Carlson, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Straight through the uprights. Will the real DC please stand up? The leading scorer Derek on the squad. What? <laughs> Show some respect. The leading nice. scorer on the squad. I mean, who's more dependable than him? I mean, I... Obviously, this is very depressing to even say, but anytime a Daniel Carlson is going to kick a field goal that's maybe like 60 yards or less, like that's money. Derek, they're going to have a good game on Sunday. They're going to beat the Cardinals. And here's the thing. You were saying like about the Cardinals, like, oh, you know, going down 0-2. It's like it's it's even like going down 0-2 against a, a team who just lost to Kansas City, who you have to keep up with. Mm-hmm. You got demolished by them, and then if you lose to them, I mean, they're gonna win. Right, right, right. I, I, I think the cards are broken. I, yeah, I yeah. agree. I, uh, and, and hopefully, we expose them like the Chiefs did. They're gonna fall like a deck of cards. That's what they're gonna do. You, you don't, you don't have to lie in this answer. Um, this is just something we were talking about yesterday. Are you excited for the King season? Yeah. D- I'm does not, it, listen, I'm not a Kings fan, so it's not like. For me, it's not like the Raiders will, where I have like anxiety and I don't have that. So I go into every year like very positive and um, excited for the season because I, I love basketball. I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just a huge basketball fan. So, yeah, I'm excited and I'm is not there, lying about that. Is there is there any one? It, it doesn't have to be a new guy, but is there some, somebody that you are looking forward to see out there? Like for me, like I. Obviously, I want to see some bonus of Fox, but I really want to see Malik Monk out there. I was going to say Malik Monk. Yeah, I want to see what he can do. Yeah, I want to see Malik Monk, but really, I do want to see De'Aaron Fox. You talk about, like, I feel like he's almost in the same spot in D.C. in in a sense where, like, this is his year. Like, this, and I feel like we keep saying that each and every year. Like, this is the year for, you know, De'Aaron. But at this point, and you guys know way better than I do, but I don't think that he's had the talent level that he has now next to him and around him. So um, it will be very interesting to see if he steps up and he's that leader. We don't need him to be that vocal leader. We don't need, but we need him to be a score. We need him to be a gamer. And we've seen that, but it's very much up and down out of De'Aaron since he's been here. Yeah. So um, I'm excited to see De'Aaron. Yeah. I, I know it's a lot is off his plate. Like he got married mm-hmm. this summer. I think that even, even little life changes like that help mm-hmm. because a lot goes into a marriage, to dating, to, and and and, and I'm sure a lot goes into when you are married. But um, in personal life, aside, it, it makes a difference. There's a bit of a calming influence it brings to the table too. It does. Yeah. He's established. <laughs> He's got a real head coach now too. Well, well, I mean, wow! What did Luke Walton do to anybody? Wow. Well. I didn't. He he's he's got a coach that has championship experience. Like, come on now. Like, he and 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 that's absolutely not a knock on Alvin either. Alvin was put in a position like that. Settled. That, that wasn't a good position at all. Three three and nine staff. And if like if you're a player on the Kings and you're not like listening to Coach Brown and taking in everything he has to say and believing in him, then like you're just you shouldn't be on the team. You're just, obviously this is the right leadership, right? And that's huge. And it all starts at the top. Anything in life 
it starts at the top and it's a trickle down effect to the bottom. So most likely if at the bottom things aren't looking right, you likely have to look up. Yeah, it's a great point. That's Sarah Hodges. We'll see you Sunday. I hope so. Sarah Good Hodges right there. This is hey, CBS hey, 13. Hey, you got to tell everybody to tune into my uh, high school football show Friday nights at 11.15. Friday night at 15 You know, I'm tapping in. 11.15. We're getting, this is our first show that we've had in two years because wow. of COVID, because, you know, they, they, mm. they moved games to like spring ball and it was just, it was a mess. We got you. 11 Friday 15, night football, 11.15. Let's go. Yeah. Friday night. That's Sarah Hodges.